According to Wikipedia, an ARG, which stands for Alternate Reality Game, is an interactive networked narrative that uses the real world as a platform, and it employs transmedia storytelling to deliver a story that may be altered by players' ideas or actions. In the context of Toontown Corporate Clash, an ARG is a community-focused event where the developers hide hints and clues in various places and encourage players to come together to solve puzzles that will reveal information about the game. In the following video, I will be summarizing the Corporate Clash 1.3 ARG and briefly talk about some of the details hinted at for the 1.3 update. The ARG begins on September 30th, 2022, with an article on the Corporate Clash website titled The Curious Case of Cogs Inc., hosted by Mac Opsis. Mac Opsis is a tune hacker who is attempting to get information on the Cogs during their recent hiring boom, and Mac finds out that the Cogs have recently hired 16 new regional managers. He decrypts four of the new hires' names and manages to print out a document from the Cogs employee portal website, Cogs.inc. In the article on the Corporate Clash website, users can click on the link and go to the COG employee portal themselves. On the website, there is nothing more than an account login section and a link to a cybersecurity page focused on strong password guidelines. We will get back to that soon. On the printed out document, we can see that Mac was able to disguise the details of the print in order to stay covert. The printer model on the page cleverly hides his name if you look closely. The content at the bottom of the page has the usernames of four of these regional managers, and judging by the file name above, which is batch 1, we can infer that there are additional files that may be revealed by Mac later. Anyway, let me type out those usernames because we're going to need those passwords to get into their accounts. Of these usernames, we know about three of the listed cogs, and since we have prior knowledge, we know that the usernames follow a full last name, full first name pattern, with the exception of Brian, who has no last name. If we look back at previous Corporate Clash comics, we know that this is Cathal Bravecog, who turns out to be the son of Alan Bravecog, or the Vice President. From the comics, we get the feeling that his father really wants him to succeed, but he is extremely lazy, so much so that he needs to read a script during his hiring interview. In the very same comic, we learn about Graham Pazer, who is an extremely cocky, pretty boy who believes he is destined for stardom at Cogs Inc. And lastly, we, we know about Brian through an article posted on August 14th, where he intercepts one of Mac Opsis's communication relays. And from the article, we can infer that Brian is confident in his intellectual ability. He is uh, proud of graduating the top of his class, and he looks down on people who he deems inferior to him. He also appears to have a transparent head, indicating that he might have like a dome encased brain, which would be very fitting for a person named Brian. You know, brain, Brian, Brian, Brain, Brian. Yeah, you, you get it. You understand. Anyway, let's get back to that password sheet. So, with not many leads to go on, the community started to brute force check passwords against usernames. Lo and behold, of the usernames we have, they got two. So, for good old Brian, his password ended up being literally just password. Completely ironic and almost expected that the arrogant intellectual would have the dumbest password. The community also found out that by typing in the wrong password for Brian, it would give you a login failure message, but with the password italicized in the phrase password incorrect. And for the apathetic Cathal Bravecog, his password would end up being ah, indicating that he is so lazy that he did not want to come up with anything remotely complex to secure his account. Very fitting. So let's log into these accounts and take a look. And with our first successful login, we find out that Brian's in-game cognome will be Prethinker, which in trying to find a proper definition found it essentially is a term for a person who informally thinks about potential outcomes both good and bad. So all of these accounts are set up the same way with a personalized profile and a few other company links that lead to other information. For now, we'll just take a look at Brian's profile. On a manager's profile, we can see some basic employee information, some disciplinary records, and a personal statement that is written by the manager themselves. We also have a little silhouette showing off what they may look like in-game. 
Let's take a look and log into Cathal's account, and we can see similar information. His in-game name is Multislacker, which refers to somebody who engages in unproductive activities in the workplace. But the goal of the ARG is to get into all of the accounts for all 16 regional managers, and so far we only have two. What other information can we find? In reading Cathal's disciplinary records, we can see mentions of racing Mr. Graham Pazer down Twilight Terrace. Cathal apparently was in violation of the Pazer test. So somebody in the community went to Twilight Terrace to investigate, and they found that going through the Twilight Terrace shortcut gave the phrase, I'm not mad, just disappointed. Why would this person be disappointed at taking a shortcut? So some deranged community member decided to run back and forth up and down Twilight Terrace in hopes to find out what the Pazer test is and... Oh. Oh. Uh... And after a short five minutes of running top to bottom, uh, without taking the shortcut, we get another clue that may lead to Graham's password. Hmm. Mile a minute. And that's that. The password was mile a minute. And we found out that Graham Pazer's in-game cognate is Pace Setter, which is a person who is viewed as taking the lead or setting standards of achievement for others. I guess with that definition, it makes sense that he was holding us accountable and forcing us not to take shortcuts. Inside Graham's disciplinary records, we can see a mention of slacking off at residence used firewood. The used firewood is actually a building on Walrus Way in the Burg. He also claimed to address burnout. Um, upon entering the building, we don't really see anything special. That is, until we use the speed chat phrase, I'm going to fire a cog where the store owner, Ashy, responds with, Sorry, I don't have a cannon. Um, where can we find a cannon? Let's try the trolley cannon game. Oh, that's odd. Why are we on fire? Wait a minute. And steal. Definitely seems like a password. But for who? It doesn't work for the last name we have, Ruffler Buck. If we open up the source code for Pacesetter's profile, we can also find a commented out long string of numbers. Interesting, but nothing we can really do with right now. Without another username, we have no more leads. All we can do is explore Toontown to see if we can find clues on our own. And so we must make our way to Barnacle Boatyard, where we'll see a new fellow on board the boat that cycles around the playground. His name is The Captain, and if you stand aboard his ship for long enough, he begins to tell a tale of his youth. Interestingly, in this story, he mentions he used to sail in a submarine called the Anna Mary. Hmm, seems a bit specific. Could that be a name worth remembering? Hmm? He also mentioned two locations that he traveled to, the competitor and the bandwidth, both capitalized names in his story. Interestingly enough, if you enter a bunch of garbage into the Cogs Inc. username field, you'll get an error that says user not found. If we attempt to log in with Anna Mary, we get an invalid password field, indicating that Anna Mary is actually the name of one of the managers. Could this manager be related to the captain somehow? Let's try using competitor bandwidth as the password. And that's it. We are in we discovered the Deep Diver, otherwise known as Mary Anna. In business, a deep dive is a term used for conducting and investigating an issue to mitigate negative effects. For our next lead, we'll take a look at Mary's personal statement, where they mention they have qualms with Barnacle Bessie, and they'll be sending her a cease and desist. Upon further exploring of Barnacle Boatyard, we find a completely new lighthouse on Lighthouse Lane. Around the back, we can find a spooky dock with some new ambient tunes. And inside the lighthouse, we can find Bessie herself. But she doesn't seem like much help. Now, Mary Anna mentioned that she was sending Bessie a cease and desist. A cease and desist in Toontown is acquired when beating the chief legal officer, otherwise known as the CLO. And when used, a cog is essentially being sued. Let's go back to the dock with the eerie music. And if we use the speed chat phrase, I'm going to sue a cog, 
we find a strange letter and a message that says this doesn't belong to you. Creepy. Uh, but let's take this back to Bessie. Bessie now wants us to investigate this note further. She mentions that the note was written by M. Monsoon, probably our next manager, and tasks us to defeat some law bots. Upon doing that and coming up short, we are tasked to go back out and defeat some boss bots. Take them out again, come back, and now Bessie wants us to defeat the director of land acquisition. So we head off to Anchor Avenue and we wipe the floor with the director, come back, and Bessie has pretty much given up. She returns the note to you, and upon inspecting further, we come across a clue on the note. We can assume that this strange string of characters is the password. The only thing left is deducing the name of the manager, which some smart individual in the community found out was Misty. Misty Monsoon. So in putting Monsoon Misty and the password, we end up gaining access. Misty is named the Rainmaker in-game, which is a person who generates income for a business by brokering deals or attracting clients or funds. Inside her profile, we can see that Misty can control the weather. She also has a few disciplinary records involving a Mr. Boar. We should keep that name down for now. In the meantime, someone found another lead at Lawbot HQ. They found that if you enter the courtroom lobby, you'll be able to say a unique speed chat phrase, are you part of the club? And if you say this near Judy, she will keep hushed and explain her involvement in a knitting club. During her monologue, she regales you in the memory of her friend Beldama, who she used to be close with. She also mentions that Belle had a grandchild who she was extremely fond of, Cassie Dama. Not only that, but Judy mentions that Belle was interested in joining Cogs Inc. This investigation seems to be case closed, but we'll try her grandchild's name as the password. And it worked. We learn that Miss Belle Dama's real name is Mouthpiece. A mouthpiece is a slang term for a lawyer, especially a criminal defense lawyer. Due to this and her relation with Judy, we can assume Mouthpiece will be a lawbot manager. One notable thing on Belle's profile is her mention of a corporation on Tenor Terrace getting taken over by lawbots at some point. If we go to Tenor Terrace, we can find the only corporation on the street is Syncopation Corporation. If we pretend to be lawbots and stand firm in our taking over of the corporation, we suddenly see a surprise note indicating that we must audit Randy Rhythm's equipment, which should be filed under folder 6. If we head back to the playground, we will get a notification upon approaching the 2D cello and trumpet. No other instruments in the Melody Land seem to let us audit. So for now, we'll just have to figure out what folder six means. Oh wait, I almost forgot about other corporate clash articles. Similar to Brian, we were revealed in a similar fashion a cog by the name of Chip Revington. He is supposedly a boss bot and is in charge of basically chopping down all the trees in Acorn Acres for selling as lumber, of course. Now we don't have any other clues for his involvement, but let's add him to the list anyway. Additionally, we know about Dave Brewbot, which is the name of the cog revealed to us through another past Corporate Clash article. Mr. Brewbot was in charge of revamping all of the cog building music in Corporate Clash, so let's add him alongside Chip. In other news, someone in the community found out that if you bulk buy gags at the gag shop, the number you buy will inexplicably stop at random numbers. Now, I had no idea that this feature was in the game, but apparently you do so by press and right click. But the community took these numbers and translated them into letters based on their position in the alphabet. And what they found was that the numbers translate into betting on black. Sounds more like a password than a name, clearly. Let's try using this password for Ruffler Buck, one of the names that we still have. And it, it actually worked. Mr. Buck Ruffler is actually a duck shuffler. I, I never want to say that again, please. Oh God. A duck shuffler is known as a person who makes changes to a project or report after it is done. We also find out that Buck is pretty much a gambling addict, so it's safe to assume he'll probably be part of the cashbot crowd. Now, while following along with the community on the Corporate Clash Discord, someone far smarter than I had found a secret zip file called auditresults.zip hidden within the game's files. Now, in order to get access to this file, you must first find a way to open phase6audio.mf. Now, I'm assuming that this audio file was chosen due to the previous folder 6 mention in the auditing of instruments in Melodyland, 
But anyway, to extract the file requires Panda 3D, which is the game engine that Toontown was built with. So I downloaded and installed Panda 3D, and then I ran the included Python executable. And then I did an intense amount of Googling and reading documentation to figure out how to run Panda 3D and extract the MF file. And eventually I did manage to get it open and we can see what files it contains. Inside we find a surprise text file, but unfortunately file is password protected. However, we had just previously done an audit of Randy's musical equipment. So using that clue we got from Melody Land, one cello, one trumpet, we can successfully get into the text file. And once we read it, we have instructions to go to YouTube and watch a video. So let's paste this in and see what comes up. Well, I can't say that I expected that. Seemingly, the trail ends here, but let's try that Rickroll URL with Mr. Dave Brubot first. And that's the password for Dave. We're in. Now, we find out that Dave is known as Major Player, which is simply a very involved or important person in an organization, which his personality reflects. His employee profile doesn't seem to lead into anything worthwhile. However, upon checking the source code of his profile, we are greeted with an ASCII art image of a cut down tree stump. And this right here left the community legitimately stumped. Now, with eight passwords found and a whole day passed, we were greeted the next morning by Mac Opsis, who provided a batch two of manager names. Among them, we have already found Dave Brubot and Beldama, and so our new names are Tawny Esta and Flint Bonpire. Hey, let's try that phrase and steal with the new name reveal Flint. Easy access. We've uncovered Flint the Firestarter, which in business are known for creating things, disrupting things, and starting things. In Toontown, of course, they are also referring to literally starting fires. On his profile, we can get a ton of information from his disciplinary records, where there are mentions of sleeping with the moonfishes and somebody who goes by the name of Mr. Cosmo Kuiper. Let's keep that name written down. If we check the profile source code, we are greeted by a square of ASCII characters that somewhat looks like a blob. Now, the square of characters also happens to closely resemble the map of Pajama Place in Drowsy Dreamland. Oh, let's go check it out and go to the spot on Pajama Place where the ASCII map is pointing to. Now, it seems to be pointing to House of Z's, but after going inside, it doesn't seem like there's anything going on. However, somebody found out that by turning on the door interaction key setting and approaching the door, the name of the building is completely different. And whenever you see zeros replacing actual letter O's, you know that it's password related. So let's try this against the names that we already have saved. Thankfully, we got the right password for Tawny Esta, AKA Feather Better. Now, feather betting is the practice of hiring more workers than are needed to perform a given job or to adopt work procedures that appear pointless. Judging by the name alone, Tawny seems to be a bird very much obsessed with sleep, so much so that in their personal statement, it looks like they may have snoozed towards the end of their description. As for the rest of their profile, it doesn't seem like there's anything to go off of here. We do have that lead related to the moon fishes though, so let's take a trip to the drowsy dreamland playground and go fishing. And after a while of fishing, these moon fishes don't really seem to be much help. But let's go back to the moon fishes thing again. Oh, it says the cold shoulder. Maybe they want us to bring the moon fishes to the cold shoulder in the berg. Nope, nope, there is nothing going on here. Wait a minute, can you catch a moon fish in the berg? Oh, you can. Aha, a clue. And if we go to every fishing spot in the berg, we get different clues. Shore, off, over, sleep, fish. Well, rearranged, it makes more sense like offshore, sleep over, fish. Offshore, fish, sleep over. Let's try that with Mr. Piper. Aha! Cosmo Kuiper, otherwise known as Plutocrat, which is a person whose power derives from wealth. Definitely a cash bot. Also, he uses the honorific of Don, so yeah, he's definitely the cash bot mafia. Now, I'm sure he has some disciplinary records, but they mysteriously are no longer a problem for him. Anyway, if we open the profile page source, we get more information about stuff. 
Uranus, Jupiter, Jupiter, Saturn, Asteroid Belt, Jupiter, Asteroid, Earth, Earth. What can we even use this pattern for? Oh, I almost forgot another lead we never looked into. Let's check one more thing back in Bell's personal statement. She also mentioned something about flunkies being fired. We can fire cogs in game using pink slips received from defeating the CEO boss fight. So let's give it a go. Let's try firing a flunky. All right, we're definitely on to something. Is this random nonsense? Let's try a second flunky and see if it's different. Nope, looks like the same text. Well, there is an apostrophe in there, so maybe this was encoded by shifting characters. Now, luckily, we do have the Caesar Cipher tool to help shift them back. Let's shift the letters around to see what we find. You can't fire me, I quit. Interesting. Maybe you can't fire me? Would that be for Chip? Yep, it was for Chip. For our 12th cog, we have discovered the Chainsaw Consultant, which is an outside person brought in to conduct layoffs. Aha, that makes sense with the you can't fire me thing. He is the one firing the flunky. In another clutch announcement, Mac Opsis comes back with batch three, and we uncover the names of two more managers, Benjamin Biggs and Spruce Campbell. Spruce Campbell, huh? Well, we still have that stumped image we never addressed. Now, anything related to trees is generally in Acorn Acres, so let's investigate there. Maybe it's a threat to chop down the center tree. Oh, nothing to find here. The clothing shop is a tree stump, but there doesn't seem to be any interaction as well. If we take to the streets, we can find a few stumps that act as mailboxes, but no interactions from these either. Nothing at all. Until someone in the community toggled on the NPC interaction key. And towards the middle of Almond Avenue, we can find one stump mailbox that lets us interact with it. But interacting does nothing. If we look back at Chip Revington's personal statement, he mentions a report of attempted bribery after disposing 200 cog bucks. Well, tunes with lore have access to cog bucks, right? So after approaching this lonesome stump and you manually discard $200 worth of lure gags, we get our next clue. Make like a tree and leaf. Let's try that in the password field for Mr. Campbell. And we're in. Mr. Spruce Campbell is known in-game as the tree killer. I can't find any indication that a tree killer is a business term. It might be literally just that. This dude kills trees. No further description needed. As for leads from his profile, if we open the source code, we're met with another secret message. For those familiar with Pig Latin, it will be immediately obvious as that. Let's decode this Pig Latin into actual understandable text so we can find our next clue. The decoded text says this. The fountain matches the walls, just like pies match the pan they were baked in. Look closely from high above, then you'll see what I mean. Gather some friends, and do it with haste, for many such eyes make the best case. Then you will see indeed it is true, just as it has always been. Definitely a community effort with this one. This clue led us to ye old Toontown, where if eight tunes stand guard on each of the tower ramparts, a cutscene will trigger and each tune will get a notification with a unique section of another password. If we unscramble these notifications, we end up with Hitch Spork Hunter. This cutscene was actually discovered very early on in the ARG, but the community did not know what to do with this password for a very long time. That is, until Mac Opsis released the final batch 4, giving us the final two manager names we need to hit our 16 regional manager goal, Prester Virgil and Holly Grail. Let's try the last password we got with these two names. And it worked with Virgil. Virgil is known as the Witch Hunter. Besides the obvious hunting of witches, a witch hunter is also someone who identifies and punishes people for their opinions. We can find in Virgil's disciplinary records mentions of risky behavior around entrances in Toon territory, and also something about being lost finding the entryway to Wizard Way. Let's take a trip over to Wizard Way Tunnel, shall we? Nothing immediately noticeable on the outlook. Open up speed chat, however, and we get an interesting message when saying the phrase, I think this is too risky for you. Holly. Well, we have a new manager named Holly, not really telling us anything we don't know. Let's try the other entryways. Lou. Huh, something different. 
And the last entryway, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's try that as Holly's password. Yep, that was it. Easy. Miss Holly Grail is also known as the gatekeeper. In businesses, a gatekeeper is someone who controls access to someone in authority or to information. Within the source code of her profile, we can find a massive ASCII image of what looks like a gateway with scrambled text in the center. If we throw the text back in our Caesar cipher decoder, we can translate it into a message that seems to point back to the ye olde Toontown solution for getting into Virgil's account. Since we already got into his account, this may be just a useless lead. Our last manager to find a password for is Benjamin Biggs. As the last manager, the community scrambled to find any leads as to where this guy's password clue was hiding. Some people thought Benjamin Biggs was a play off of Big Ben, and so people ran around Melody Land and Drowsy Dreamland looking for clock-based things. Unknown to them, Big Ben is actually the bell inside, not the clock base. Corporate Clash Tune King Fluffy made a point that of the neighborhoods that have been part of the ARG, Daffodil Gardens has been the least represented. So the community took to the streets of Daffodil Gardens to find clues about Mr. Biggs. Along the way, while listening to knock-knock jokes, somebody came across... Well, ring-a-ling-ring -ring doesn't really feel like a punchline, and we're searching for Benjamin's password. But using it to log in doesn't work. The community then tried a number of different tactics to find the condition for Benjamin's joke to show up. Discord user Gravity discovered that the joke shows up every seven joke doors. And so somebody attempted the password ring-a-ling-ring -ring seven, and the final manager was found. Mr. Benjamin Biggs, also known as the bell ringer. I can't find much information on bell ringers, but his job seems to be related to securing intel on tunes. Upon opening the profile source code, we're met with this strange jumble of characters. Catch, fish, the, temperature rapidly dropping. This hint may link back to Cosmo Kuiper with the moonfish. And with Ben found, we can say we found the password for all 16 managers. At this point, phase one has been deemed completed by the community, except there is more to be done. You see, when logged into a cog, you can access a number of pages, except one. The employees list. If you click on the employees list, you're told that you're not part of the secretaries list. This led people to believe that the ARG would end after getting into Jennifer's account. Jennifer is the boardbot secretary cog who is in charge of hiring these 16 managers. And if you check her image's source on the leadership page, we can see her full name is Jennifer Jackson. With this, we know what her username is. For the password, we would have to wait for the article on the Corporate Clash website to update, indicating that a secret document was found from Cogs Inc. A super secret crossword puzzle, consisting of a number of corporate-esque questions. The community quickly set out to solve this crossword puzzle. When finished, they took the letters that happened to fall on the dark squares of the crossword puzzle and attempted to rearrange them with no clear goal. However, attempting to log into Jennifer's account indicates that her account is locked out, and an email must be sent to recover it. A community member got a response from Cogs Inc. IT support saying that in order to prove our identity as Jennifer, we need to tell them her favorite drink. With this as a lead, the community had a better idea of what to unscramble in the password. With multiple people on the job, it didn't take long before people came up with Cafe Moki Soil, with soil being one of the key words used to craft the word, but the login still would not work. Then the community re-scrambled the letters to spell out soil macchiato, a great pun on soy macchiato. And with that, we could finally gain access to Jennifer's account. Inside Jennifer's account, we can see a few things unique to her. Unlike the other managers, we cannot access her profile. The first link gives us access to the chairman's Work It Out mixtape, which when we listen to it, it... Whatever it is, it is ear piercing. I will not subject you all to it. We can also finally view the employees list. On this page, we're able to see the breakdown of which managers are part of what department. Deep Diver and Gatekeeper as board bots, Bell Ringer, Pre-Thinker, Multi-Slacker, and Pace Setter as cell bots, Duck Shuffler, Tree Killer and Plutocrat as cashbots, 
Mouthpiece, Rainmaker, and Witch Hunter as Lawbots, and lastly, Firestarter, Featherbetter, Major Player, and Chainsaw Consultant as Bossbots. Woo! This is an exciting 1.3 update to look forward to. I'm hype. And yet, even with all these surprises, we have another page to look at, the Under Construction page. Of course, it is password protected, and the password hint below has some strange capitalization going on. Submitting the wrong password or anything at all gives us an error message with similar weirdly capitalized letters. And back on the under construction page, if we hover over the images, we can see a hidden message from Mac. Mac applauds us for getting this far, but he is afraid that he's no longer able to figure out this puzzle. We need to solve it or there will be grave danger. The future relies on us. But the future can wait. For now, I have to end the video. With the entry into Jennifer's account, this technically concludes the base Corporate Clash 1.3 ARG. As I write the script for this video, the community is hard at work trying to solve the ARG part 2 involving this under construction page. However, it is apparently unrelated to the 1.3 update, and so, my apologies, I will not be covering that part in this video. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the streets of Toontown.